Howdy YouTube, it's Pat here. Just quickly rustled me up some data. Just inserted some data, some text into my here uh, database, my vector store. And now I'm going to go into to my Claude and ask it, Hey Claude, query my rag database for who controls Syria. <laughs> Let's see what we got here. I'll help you query the rag database. Query light rag. Who controls Syria? Let's see what it comes back with the rag database and see if it's able to uh, rustle me up some proper answers. Who's controlling Syria right now? You should know based upon the updated information I've given you, Claude. Come on, you cowpoke. Need to giddy up. You're querying too slowly. The database should be up, so the query should work. Hopefully, there are no problems. Let me check the database logs as that's running. Maybe we ran into some issues, as we do. What? Is the database down? Is it crashing? Oh, something's happening. Runtime error. Something crashed. Oh boy. Post command, post command. Query timed out. Oh no. Got an error. Well, I had to go back to the drawing board. Oopsies. Let's try it again. Huh? Ah. I think your format's wrong. That's what I should say. I think, I think your format is wrong. You need to supply a mode as well. Maybe mode hybrid. Oh, did it work? Hey, a runtime error. Overview. Question surrounding extent of control. Historical context has always been a pivotal figure. Sans role what? By multiple factions. Hmm? Overview. The situation in the turn is a complex has been a focal point as of time now. That's not right. Someone else does. It did work. Hold on a minute. It worked. Uh, which other groups? I don't care about that. Look, Assad does not control Syria. Someone else does. According to a source, there is an assertion that Assad does not control Syria. All right, I'm going to drop the stupid Texas voice. Um, or not Texas, which is the weird southern voice. So I put in the database that Assad doesn't control Syria, but I guess it's trying to access some extra information. So the RAG queries, I think they go through OpenAI... So it might have been something like, uh, yeah. Recent news highlights that the situation remains fluid with reports indicating that as of this time may not hold. So I think it's going through OpenAI and actually added a bunch of extra stuff. But <laughs> it did go through the RAG database and get the actual query. I, I think I need to spe specify that I don't want additional context. But you can see that it did get the document... Where was it? <laughs> I love this. Uh, Assad may not hold the same level. According to a source, there's an assertion that Assad does not control Syria. Someone else does. <laughs> this statement emphasizes. So it's cool that it highlights that, that it's actually that's from the RAG database. Um, anyway, I put that information in there. Let me go back to another one. This was a. I was going to make this a YouTube short and try to do it really quickly, but anyway. Uh, where's the other one? Exploring. Not this one. I think it's this one. Connecting to the rag server. Do, 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 do. Oh man, why is Claude so slow today? Okay. Uh huh. I think this is one. Yeah. So I put in other information into the rag database that only I would know. So, where is it? Uh,. I'll try the query. 
Let me analyze the results. The response seemed to be primarily focused on Patrick Roth again. So the query, uh, I asked it like, uh, <laughs> I, well, I only put one piece of data in there and I said to, to put it in like with the, I think I asked it for like without the additional context, but um, it came up with its own query. Hang on a second. Let me, this is actually pretty funny. Uh, it's telling me like how to use the different query thing, but I, we're just testing the server out and I don't know, I told it to like get back information on Patrick Ruffin and at first it was like, I can't, you know, I don't want to respect privacy and all this kind of stuff. Then I was just asking it to do the query multiple times. And then it started asking about significant life uh, events in my life. All I did was I put in there that, um, uh, Patrick Ruff used to be fat as a child. That's a secret. And then. So all this stuff is like, it's adding in all this stuff about childhood, the critical time. Notably, one secret chair is that Patrick Wolf was very fat during his early years. So like, look at the highlighted quotation marks, very fat uh, during his early years. This could imply various implications for his social interactions, self-image, and lifestyle choices during that time. Inferences and insights, even though there are no detailed accounts of various of specific events, being characterized as very fat suggests Patrick may have had significant experiences related to health, social dynamics, and potentially family influences. So it's adding like so much stuff. Like there's paragraphs and paragraphs and paragraphs. And then it's like even Claude now analyzing. So OpenAI wrote all this extra crap about me. And then now Claude's analyzing what OpenAI wrote. And it's saying the response seems to be primarily focused on Patrick Ruff again. The content appears to be inference and speculation rather than concrete events. The only specific detailed mention is about him being very fat during childhood. The response is quite verbose while containing little factual information. Potential issues. There's a lot of filler text that doesn't add substantive information. Yeah, no duh. It's like all the AI generated slop that's now just filler. The system seems to be extrapolating and making assumptions without clear evidence. Yes, yes. Thank you, OpenAI, for all this filler it's repeating the same point about weight multiple times with different phrasing quality assessment the response style is formal but somewhat circular there's an over reliance on generic statements about childhood development the system acknowledges limited information let me try another query see if we can get more concrete information so it's like it's now it's like trying to ask about facts and then uh it's just like it's not really getting any information it's getting more of this slop Secrecy around personal information. The system appears to be a very limited data set, possibly containing just one or two pieces of information about Patrick Ruff. So Claude was able to infer, even with all the extra slop, that there's very little actual information. Um, so the pattern observed, yeah, it takes any query and like adds a bunch of junk. It's verbose. Recommendations for the RAG system only need context. So we then put in only need context equals true to just see the source material, not all the extra crap. And then that actually helped a lot. So the query now became, tell me about Patrick Ruff. Only need context? True. And well, first it timed out and then uh, we fixed it. And then now it's looking at like the source text. And so now it's seeing like all the different entities. I guess it stores it as a CSV. I didn't realize that. So it's storing all these things as a CSV, which you could create a graph database out of a CSV or JSON or whatever. But here it's storing everything as a CSV. And it, it, so I gave it a short piece of text and then it created all these entities on its own. So LightRag was able to effectively generate all these, um, you know, childhood event um, attributes. Patrick Ruff, a person. So it's, it's, start, it's like piecing together entities on its own, which is pretty cool. I like that. Patrick Ruff is an individual described in childhood as being very fat, indicating personal characteristics that may have an impact to his experience. So then there's a secret. A secret is a concept. A secret refers to personal information about Patrick Ruff's childhood that may indicate sensitivity regarding his self-image. Relationships. There's no relationships. Um, and then there's the source. The, the, source. Not the source. The source is just, this is what I put into the database. When Patrick Ruff was little, he was very fat. That's a secret about Patrick Ruff. So that's all I put in there, but then all that weird AI slop. But then now Claude's like, the entire knowledge base consists of a single sentence. When Patrick Ruff was little, he was very fat. That's a secret about Patrick Ruff. The system has created entities from this. Person, Patrick Ruff, event, childhood, category, personal characteristic, concept, secret. So LightRag is basically going through all of your text, 
generating all the entities, all the relationships for you. So you don't have to create a graph database yourself. Like I didn't have to go in there and create node Patrick Graph. Like it literally used the language model to create these data structures. It then it's embedding. And then when you're going back and actually trying to retrieve the information, it's going through a graph system, but you don't have to create the graph yourself. And it's a very efficient way of doing it versus like, um, so many rag systems out there are these like huge, like overbuilt, like ridiculous systems that you need to do a lot of manual curation. This is all LLM like generated. So the LLM is going through splitting things up, chunking everything. Um, yeah, anyway, so I'm going to do more work with this, but right now the MCP for light rag is up and it's working and it's great. And as you just saw, I gave it, I gave it a new piece of information just now. And then, uh, it was able to get information about Syria. So, uh, I'll ask it to do the query again, but only as per context. Do the query again, but make sure to only get the context. So set the context uh, variable in the query to true. I don't, I don't even know if it's going to know that from the tool. Oh, only need context. Okay, cool. So it's smart enough to know to only need context. So it knows about that in the tool. Who controls Syria? And now let's see what it returns. So now it should just give me what I want. So the interesting thing is that it's rag. So when it's making these queries, it's not only just taking your query, it's also return when, when it returns your query, you can, it could return the generative aspect of it. But for me, I don't want any sort of extra stuff. I just want what's in the database. So I don't need to know, you know, what open AI's thought process is around this. So the extra slop is not needed for me. I just want the context, at least in this case, I guess in the future, if someone was asking a question, they wanted like more interpretation and, um, you know, additional language around it, they might want more. Uh, let's see, is the query going through? I noticed the database is a little bit finicky. That's cool. So you can see it's actually going through and failed. It says failed to call a tool, but I think it actually worked. Uh, Windows event, maybe it did crash. Let's see the result. Error executing. Oh, that's weird. I apologize for the timeout. I need a more focused query. Oh, it did timeout after 60 seconds. Okay. I put a timeout on for 60 seconds, so that's weird. I guess sometimes it just fails. I gotta check the logs. So it's not a completely foolproof system yet. Um, it went through OpenAI, got the embeddings. Do do do. It failed again. Select self pulled timeout. Oh, it's just timing out. Does it need to have the mode in there? Screen persistent technical issues. Error connection refused. Huh. That's interesting. Connection refused. Oh, wow. And now it crashed. That's cool. Huh. All right, well, I'm going to have to work on these bugs. It's weird that it, like, crashes like that. I noticed the system crashes. I'm going to go back to the other chat. Uh -huh. Do -do 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 -do. That's a brittle system. Uh, sometimes the server just times out or crashes. Like, let's see what Claude says with this error. I'll debug more of this later. Look at this server like I see a few little things going on. The server seems to be working. There's an async related error in Windows. The pending operation and suggests some async operations aren't being cleaned up properly. The current MC behavior just times out of state, which isn't ideal. Yeah. Let's make it more resilience. 
So I'll, I'll get the MCP uh, published again, but there's been like a, basically a debugging process going back and forth. And I don't want to go into the specifics of it, but there's been a lot of issues just with Lightrag in general. But if you need to run the server, I'll make another video at a different time. But this was just basically to get you up and running <laughs> with Lightrag. And then I was just going to do a minute video because I've got other stuff to do. But um, just know that on, on the radar, if you are following this channel, you will soon have a very efficient, very good database um, at your fingertips with Lightrag. So I'll debug more of this later. I don't know why the server crashed that time, but I'll look into it. I'll fix it. And then we'll have Lightrag up and running and you can query to your heart's content. And, you know, there'll be a bigger, more detailed video on this later. So anyway, just gonna post this.